name is Keith Lamont McMillan, and I'm with Jackson State University. And I'm, I'm with the Interdisciplinary Alcohol Drug Study Center um, on the campus of Jackson State. And we work with a grant with the Mississippi Office of Highway Safety. So basically what we do with them is to talk to, uh, we work with the grant for the Mississippi Office of Highway Safety, basically working to decrease the number of teen fatalities due to driving on Mississippi highways. And okay. so that's what we do. Um, and so I have a little presentation. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, you know, to go through, but we'll be talking about, um, talking about safe driving practices, uh, seatbelt safety, and a few other things that's dealing with occupant safety, okay, in vehicles. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to share my screen and see if I can pull this uh, presentation up. I see it. Okay. All right. Give me just a second here. Let me see here. Let me move this little bar. Occupant safety. All right. And now I'll try to go through it a little quicker. Okay. Right. So you see this, okay. And so again, this is this presentation is about occupant safety, Jackson State University Interdisciplinary Alcohol Drug Study Center. And our director is Miss Ernestine Brown. Uh, there on the campus of Jackson State, okay? okay. Uh, so when we talk about um, when we talk about occupant safety, what's one of the things that you think about? If we're talking about occupant safety, uh, what's one of the things that you might think about? I don't know if I think about driving, but I will think about like someone keeping safe, you know? Okay, all right, all right, okay. Good deal. And so let me ask you, how, how old are you? 14. 14, okay. And so our target market is generally uh, 16 to 20, uh, mm -hmm. but but 14, you know, 13, 14, and of course a little bit older. So we like to pre present this information, you know, so it's definitely good uh, so that you'll know moving forward. So you haven't started working on, you haven't started working on getting your temporary license, have you? No, but that. Uh I started on driving though. Okay, but you okay? All right, all right. Well, that's good. That's good. So definitely, this information might be a little useful for you. Okay. Okay. Um, and so I am going to. I tell you what. I know you're you're pressed for time. I'm going to show you just a little bit of this video. It's generally about three minutes long, uh, but we're going to try to do it maybe like a minute and a half. Okay. Uh, okay. But basically, this is just a compilation video, just showing you some things. You may have seen it on YouTube. Uh, anyway, but I'm gonna go ahead and play it and just to let you see it for just a moment, okay? Okay. And as soon as I get back to it, let's see. All right. And it's just a compilation video about uh, that shows what happens when you don't wear seatbelt. Right? Okay. So you're gonna see a lot of people. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. See that person got thrown out of the vehicle. We got ran over too, look like. No, he didn't get he didn't get run over. The car missed him. Yeah, the car missed him a little bit. Oh wow, you see them get thrown out of the car? Oh, I, I was I was looking at the truck. I didn't even see. Yeah, he got thrown out. We would see one more. Yeah. That person hanging out, and so they didn't have their seat belts on. Them. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video short. Uh, okay. But that's you know that just sort of shows what can happen you know when you're not properly restrained inside of your vehicles. And so the purpose of this presentation is to increase the awareness of occupant safety uh, for young drivers aged 16 to 20 years old, and to decrease the number of fatalities caused by unrestrained drivers. So that's the purpose of this particular presentation. 
And so what is occupant safety? So when we talk about occupant safety, um, occupant safety is generally the planning and development of traffic injury control safety programs in the areas of like seat belts, uh, car, child car seat use, automatic occupant protection systems. You know, you've been in vehicles where uh, right now, you know, you have some more safety, uh, safety systems in vehicles, stuff like automatic braking systems. You know, they have cars mm -hmm. now. If you get too close to another vehicle while you're driving, it'll automatically stop, you know, or slow down. You've seen yeah. that? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen it before. I think I've been to one of those cars. Okay. All right. And uh, so when you think about stuff like that, what's another, what's another uh, system that's designed for safety in vehicles that you might be able to think of? Um, the, like, you know, like the voice, the voice part. So you won't have to do like anything manually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you won't be so, <laughs> yeah, voice acting. Yeah. You yeah. can just talk and tell you what to do or whatever. There you go. So that's definitely a safety, uh, a safety system uh, that, that newer cars have been designed with. Exactly. So you'd be less distracted. Because uh, distracted driving is an issue as well, and that causes a lot of accidents also. But you were right. And so you have anything from, you know, of course, airbags, uh, yeah. the, the, the way that the stern wheels are designed now. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the stern wheels are actually designed for safety you know, uh, because, you know, they're soft. And so if you do hit it, it won't do as much damage um, as, as in the past. Uh, you have those braking systems. Even some of the windows are designed to a way that if something hits it or something, it's not just going to shatter and fall out. You know, they're going to, it's just going to remain there because it's, it's like a safety glass. Uh, and the way it's designed, it's almost like two or three layers uh, of glass. And so that's, that's designed to protect you. And then you also have some other things with some of the other vehicles. Um, I, we mentioned about the automatic braking, but you even have some cars now, some of the newer cars that uh, they have like a camera all around, right? You know, yeah. you can see the whole car and, and it just say, for instance, if you veer out of your lane, you know, it may, yeah. it may be you back there, right? there you go. There you go. So all of those things are made uh, are designed to keep us safe um, on the highways. And so those, so those are what we're really talking about when we talk about occupant safety. But specifically with this presentation, we're going to be talking about seatbelt safety, okay? Um, in just a few facts, and, and you may just make a, make a middle note, a mental note of these, or you can write some of these down, but we're going to cover them again in just a second. But January 1, uh, 1968, this is when the first seatbelt uh, was basically the first law which required that all vehicles should have seatbelts. And so this was in January 1 of 1968, where all seat belt, where all vehicles were required to have seatbelts. Now, although all vehicles were required to have seatbelts at that time, mm -hmm. everybody was not required to wear them. It was still only voluntary to wear. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't until 1984 December 1st of 1984, that New York became the first state to pass a law that required seatbelt use. So it was, you know, what is that? That's like 20, that's like uh, 20, 24 years later, you know, uh, that New York became the first state to pass a law that required seatbelt use. And what made them want to do that? Like, was it too many deaths or injuries or something? Mm. Now that's definitely a good question, uh, but but more as as vehicles became more and more uh, accessible, and you have more and more drivers and more spaces, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that that sort of prompted it because you know New York is a high traffic area, um, you know, and so I don't I don't know exactly what the legislation was or what they were thinking that prompted that, but I'm pretty sure that as they as vehicles evolved and they started seeing accidents and stuff then i'm pretty sure that that was uh, one of the one of the things that legislation were thinking about when they decided to say hey everybody should be uh wearing a seatbelt but that was in 1984 but it wasn't until uh until later uh that mississippi actually became the 22nd state to miss to implement this law so we, you know, so here it is. We were well behind, and this is. It wasn't until 2006 that we implemented a law here in Mississippi that said that people has to have to wear seatbelts. 
you know. So right now there's still one state, uh, is only, and it's only one state. Uh, New Hampshire is the only state that has no enforceable laws for wearing a seatbelt right now. And so, uh, and so I don't, I like to say, I don't know exactly what the legislation looks at to make that determination. Uh, but New Hampshire, they have not, they have not passed those laws uh, that says that people have to wear seatbelts. And right now that's the only state uh, that does not have a seatbelt law. So everywhere else you go, uh, just know that there is a law to wear a seatbelt, but New okay. Hampshire is the only one that does not have it. So if you're trying to... Huh? Okay. I have a question. Okay. Okay. So what if you like going for you're not going like to a place that's far away and it's like really close? Do you are you still required to wear a seatbelt? Anytime you get into that vehicle and you put that vehicle on a Mississippi street or highway, you are required to wear your seatbelt. So even if you're just going down the block, going down the highway, going down the street, you know, you just yes. Anytime that that vehicle gets on a Mississippi highway or a street, you it is required. You are required to be buckled up. Okay. And so, so if the police, so just say for instance, if you you might just be going down the street, just say uh, like okay, I, so I stay on a corner, and so like when as soon as I pull out of my driveway, I'm at I'm at like the main intersection. If I were to pull out, uh, just just going to the next block. And just say, for instance, if, some, if a police had a roadblock right there, and yeah. I just so happen to get on that, I mean, I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally just now getting on the highway. If they have a roadblock there and they see me without a seatbelt, it doesn't matter. And I've only that's that's less than a quarter. That's less than a quarter mile, right? Oh, yeah. uh, if they saw me with a seat without having my seatbelt on, I could uh, be fine for that. And so any time that you get on a Mississippi street or highway, you should have your seatbelt on. Okay. That was a good question. And so um, now also one of the things that we want to talk about, and, and maybe you've heard of this, but if you're not over the age of, tw uh, if you're not 13 and above, uh -huh. you're not supposed to be on the front seat of a vehicle. Yeah, if I heard that a lot. You heard that a lot? Okay. Because wow. seven, seven-year-old passengers up to age 12, they must use the rear seat of a vehicle and use the automobile seat restraint. So if you're not 13, uh, you have to be on the back seat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that is definitely a law as well. And so I've seen, I've seen many people, you know, a lot of, and a lot of people don't know that. So it's surprising yeah. that. I see, I see a lot of babies sitting on the front seat sometimes too. Exactly, and that's 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 not only against the law, but it's also dangerous for them to be up there on their front seat. And so, of all the of all the fatalities in Mississippi in 2017, uh, 47 percent of all the fatalities that took place, um, occupants, passenger vehicle occupants, were killed and unrestrained. So basically, out of all the accidents that happened, 47 of them were killed because they did not have on a seatbelt. Now, out of all those people that did die, 37% of them were 14 years of age or older or younger. And so that's really why we're targeting this age group. Uh, because, well, we're talking in 16 to 20, but the younger age group as well, because they made up a large portion of that total number of deaths, you know. Uh, so, and seat belts actually reduce fatalities by 50 to 65%. So they do, it does save lives. And you may have heard people all the time, I, I remember hearing people talk about, oh, seat belts hurt you, you don't want, you know, it, it, it hurts your chest, or they do more damage than what it does good. You know, you may have heard something like that before. Or that is lame or whatever. Or that is lame, right. It's not cool. Right. Different stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. But seatbelts do reduce fatalities by more than 50 to 65 percent. And so that's why it's really important uh, for us to make sure that we have uh, on those restraints, on those systems. Of course, you have some vehicles that are exempt, uh, you know, from, from child restraints. Uh, farm vehicles, 
uh, rural carriers. I think now they've actually, uh, it's in legislation that they're discussing, you know, putting seatbelts on buses. And so I know some buses, like school buses and stuff like that, some buses do have seatbelts now, uh, but for a long time they didn't, but they are discussing legislation to actually ensure that buses and stuff have seatbelts on them as well, okay? And if, and, if, and if a person, especially if a young child is not able to wear a seatbelt, like they may have some type of medical condition, mm -hmm. if they're caught without the seatbelt, they have to also have a permission from the physician telling why. You know, they, they have to have a medical reason and they have to have proof of that on them, um, you know, so that they won't be fine if, if, if something's going on with them that, that, that prohibits them from wearing a seatbelt. They, okay. that, that they have to have some type of documentation. And so when we think about, when we think about um, consequences, how much do you think a, a, a ticket is for not wearing a seatbelt in Mississippi? I'd say about like $500 or so. Mm. Okay, okay. I mean, now, a lot, of, a lot of people think it should be up there like that, especially mm -hmm. for Mississippi. But Mississippi, the, the seatbelt law is only, is, is $25. 25 mm -hmm. 25 It's a $25 fine. However, now, in other states, uh, you, it, is a, it is a more, they have more, a more strict uh, consequence for not wearing your seatbelt. Like in Texas, uh, Atlanta, I know that their prices range anywhere from, from 150 to 250, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but Mississippi is $25. And this is a state decision. Um, and so of course, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what their reasoning or, or how they determine how much that cost should be, but it goes through the legislature and they make that decision. And, you know, so that's the decision. That's, that's the uh, that's the fine in which uh, they decided on up under Senate Bill twenty seven twenty four. So it goes through the Senate and stuff like that. And so they make these decisions. But for Mississippi, a fine for not wearing your seatbelt is twenty five dollars. And that actually started in twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. So that started in twenty seventeen. Uh, you have any questions so far? Um, no. Okay, okay. Wait, what is the best way to avoid distracted driving? The best way to avoid distracted driving? Um, and I guess it depends on what your distraction is, you know. Uh, so, I mean, most times a distraction may be a cell phone. I mean, so like you mentioned earlier, you know, you have voice systems and vehicles and stuff. So if you uh -huh. have a cell phone or something, you know, use your Bluetooth, use your voice activation. Um, you could be distracted in other ways. Um, you know, maybe, you know, you could be looking down or trying to, uh, to handle something or, or turning around being distracted by somebody in your back seat. I mean, the best way to do it is just try to stay focused, more focused as you can. Now for me, you know, you know, I, and, and a lot of people say, you know, I'm a theorist, uh, but I, I think that what another distraction that many people have is, and you may not think about it, you may not even believe me, but. I think that going through drive throughs is a distraction. Going through drive throughs Yes. Because think about it. Most times when we get our food. You know, oh, yeah, we try to eat while driving. You're trying to eat while driving. And, and, you let, and you let something get on you or on your clothes. Or you drop, you you drop, to clean it off. Exactly. You drop a cup of, uh, you know, of hot coffee or even a drink on you or something. The first thing you're going to be like, ooh. Ooh, you know, and that just those two, two or three seconds, you are distracted, you know, and that could definitely cause, uh, you know, that can cause an accident. And so, that, but that's just me. <laughs> but I, I mean, but any, anything can be a distraction. Anything can be a distraction for you. My so, mom just, my mom just tell us to wait till we get home. To eat, to drive, to eat stuff out of the drive through Uh huh. Or she just pulled into the um, parking lot. That's the best thing to do. I mean, if you, you know, if, if you got to, you know, if you got to take a call or something, right, pull over or something like that. Uh, and then like, like, like a drive through or something, if you're getting something. Yeah, if you need to eat, the best thing to do is just wait till you stop. I mean, to be honest with you, because anything can happen and it, and it doesn't take long to be distracted. I mean, it just takes a, a second or two seconds 
uh, for you to take your eyes off the road uh, because you might just be driving. As soon as you take your eye off the road and focus on something else, somebody somebody else may have hit you or something yeah. because you hadn't been because you wasn't paying attention, you know, uh, to your surroundings. So it's not all about uh, you uh, being safe for yourself, uh, but it's also about you being able to watch around you and your surroundings. You know, so so staying focused. So yeah, so those are some of the best things that you can do as far as being distracted. Okay. Okay. Um, so some of the consequences. So we talked about that. So we also talk about speeding a little bit. So Mississippi, uh, we have two types of speeding laws. We have an absolute limit, and then we have a basic speeding law. So we have an absolute limits law and a basic limit law. I mean, a basic speeding law. So when we say absolute, if we're talking about uh, absolute speed, what do you think that means? So think about absolute, but when you think about that, what do you think that means? Absolute. I think that like that's way over the limit, like absolute over the limit, like okay. you exceeding it. And basic, I think that's probably like it's close to the limit, but you're really not there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Or, or a little over it or whatever. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about it. So when we think about absolute, so let me ask you this. So when you think about absolute with math, what, what, when you think about absolute, what's an absolute number when you think about that? Um, I've been out of school for a while. I really can, forgot. Can that, <laughs> number, can that number be anything else? If it's no, absolute? It's, it's directly that number. It's directly that number. That's exactly right. And so it's an absolute, it's an absolute figure. It's an absolute number. And that's the way it is with absolute laws and limits. And so if the speed limit says 70 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, mm -hmm. that's an absolute law. And so if that means that if it says 60 miles an hour and you go 61, mm -hmm. you're actually breaking the limit. You're breaking the law. Because it, it, a lot of times I know that, you know, we – a lot of times we don't get tickets uh, over, you know, if you're going one or two miles over the speed limit. But that's not to say that it's not uh, the law. Or that's not to say that you're not breaking the law when you're going over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. Okay. That just means that, you know, if somebody didn't give you a ticket and they saw you, they just had a little grace on you, you know. Yeah. But they can actually give you a ticket uh, for going one mile over the speed limit because you – have exceeded that absolute speed limit, okay? And the okay. same thing for basic. Now, basic says that, okay, well, basic says, okay, well, generally, the, absolute, the maximum speed that you can go is what the absolute limit is. But then when we talk about basic speeding law, that says that, okay, well, you can adjust your speed accordingly we don't, you know, you still can't go over the speed limit, but you can adjust your speed according to your surroundings or according to the, uh, according to the curves or whatever in the road, according yeah. to weather conditions and stuff like that. So the absolute, the absolute speed simply says, that, hey, you can't go over what the speed limit says. And the right. basic says you can adjust your speed accordingly so you don't miss, so you don't have to go 70 miles an hour. You can go 60 miles an hour if if something warrants that. You know, yeah. if, if you have to go a little slower because of the conditions of the road. So those are the two things. And so that's really what it's talking about. So absolute speeds, there's no trick to how Mississippi absolute speed works. If the absolute speed limit is 50 miles an hour and you drive faster than that, you have violated the law. Okay. And the same thing for the basic speed. Basic speeding law requires drivers to reduce their speed as appropriate when approaching curves, a hill, or, or when other weather conditions warrant the reduction. And so those, that's the basics of those two laws. So you got the absolute speed limits, and then you got basic speeding law. Okay. okay. And of course, you know, tickets can range anywhere from one fifty to three hundred dollars, depending on where you are. You know, depending yeah. on what city you're in. So different counties, different cities, uh, they set their own uh, they set their own amount for tickets. You know, for the cost of that ticket. And so, depending on where you go and how fast you're going and all that, they take all of that into consideration. 
Now, also, okay. when you're speeding, you have two types of driving. You have a reckless driver, and then you also have a careless driver. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you think a reckless driver is? I think, uh, um, like, what was the options you say, reckless and what? Uh, reckless and careless. I think a reckless driver is like a driver that just don't care. Like, they'll go into other lanes and f crossing in front of people mm. and stuff like that. And, okay. then a and then a careless driver is probably one that, um, that they might, like, they consider you, but they really don't consider you as much. Okay. You know? Okay. All right. And so the first thing when you when you said reckless, you definitely hit something on the head when you said that, you know, vehicles may go across the lane and, you know, you might cut in front of somebody or something. And so when we talk about reckless driving, reckless driving is when you involving uh, that's driving without regard to people or or property. And so, and so if people are around or property is around, you're driving in a manner that can harm either people or property. That's so what you're, that's you're what not driving about surroundings or whatever. Uh -huh. I said, so a reckless driver don't care about their like surroundings and stuff. They don't care about their surroundings, but the key to reckless is, is that you're putting, you're putting someone or something in harm's way. You know, because and so a lot of times if you're going like 15 miles over the speed limit, well, you're putting you're not only putting yourself in harm's way, you know, you're also putting other people or other property in harm's way if something were to go wrong. So if you're going 15 miles an hour over the speed limit, well, you could lose control. And if somebody is around you, you know, you can that that could be considered reckless driving. Now, careless driving, uh, it says that, hey, um, you, you might be distracted. You know, you, you may have gotten a French fry or something, and, and you, you're distracted and you swerve, you know. Well, when you swerved, you know, maybe no one was around. So, so you really, you know, so the only, the only people that you could have hurt was maybe your own property, right? And Most so, of the time you can fix yourself. Right, Exactly. Exactly. So, so this was exactly. So this was probably uh, something that you can, as as long as you're it, it's only your property. And so, yeah. so just say so. If you be careless, if you run into a ditch, you know, if you're you know you're distracted and no one else was around, but you run into a ditch or something, or you swerve and you know something like that, depending on conditions of the road, that's careless because you did not, you know, you didn't other people or other property was not put in harm's way. But okay. it's reckless when you're putting other people and other people's property uh, in harm's way, okay? okay. Um, and so, and so uh, let me see here, let me go through this right here. And so, yes, so depending on depending on the circumstances of speeding violation can cause a reckless driving conviction. Reckless driving is operating a vehicle in the willful disregard for the safety of persons or property. And so uh, just say, for instance, if I'm in a school zone or mm -hmm. something like that, or in a small community going through a little neighborhood, I don't have to be going 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. I could be going five miles over the speed limit. Yeah. Why do you think that would be considered to be reckless driving? Because it's it's a small community and the um, people are together. There you go. There you go. So it could still be reckless driving, even if you're driving just a few miles over yeah. the speed. But uh, yeah. but a small community or a school zone, well, anybody you're putting, on the street or whatever. Like that. There you go. You're putting people right. You're putting people in harm's way. And so anytime you're putting people in harm's way or other people's property in harm's way, that's reckless driving, okay? But careless driving, um, careless driving is basically without regard uh, for, for paying attention to roads or traffic or going around corners and the use of streets and highways and stuff, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so that's that's what that that's exactly what that is. So a reckless driving involves the operation of a vehicle that's obviously dangerous, uh, mm -hmm. or subtle instances of bad driving might be in the careless driving category. So uh, you know, but but it just depends on where you you know what's going on. So so like I said, if you're driving 15 miles an hour down through down a street that no one else is on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, you know, the law might says, you know, they might say that it was, it could have been reckless if someone else was around, but if no one else was around, they may just say that that was careless of you, you know, to do that because, because you didn't put anybody else in harm's way, but you could have hurt yourself or your own property. And so that's what that is. Uh, now, most in here in Mississippi, um, a careless driving conviction, you know, you can get fined up to five dollars or fifty dollars. But there's also a standard ninety dollar and fifty cent fee that the court is going to charge you on top of whatever you're charged with. And so that's a ninety dollar and fifty cent assessment fee on top of whatever you are charged with. Okay. Okay. So that's something to keep just something to remember but i mean that's that's really it that's the entire presentation now uh i have a one little uh you know about jeopardy a little bit yeah i played before okay well i'll tell you what we're gonna answer just a few questions of jeopardy and okay. then uh, we used to sign website huh we used to sign website uh jeopardy labs uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it's 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 actually pretty cool. And mm -hmm. so uh we'll we'll go through this through like maybe four of them with you and then I'll try to answer some as well. And okay. so um pick a category and a number for me. Um occupant safety three hundred. Occupant safety three hundred, all right. All right. The date in which all vehicles were to be fitted with seat belts but voluntary to wear. Nineteen sixty eight. Or seven. Okay. All right. All right. I think it was sixty-eight. Uh, but what's the uh the month and the date? Oh, I, I forgot the month, but I remember the year. Okay, you you, you sure got it. But I think that was January, January one. January yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay. Uh, give me another. One. Um, speeding three hundred. Speeding three hundred. Okay. Okay, reducing speed as appropriate when approaching crossings or when other road or weather conditions warrant the reduction. And remember to answer a question with a and to answer to answer this with a question. Okay. Since we're on Jeopardy. What is basic speeding? What is basic speeding? There you go. Good job. Okay, give me another one. Um, occupant safety facts four hundred. Occupant safety facts four hundred. Mm -hmm. All right. In Mississippi, a new law requires that this number of people to buckle up in a car, truck, or SUV. I didn't talk about this a whole lot, but see if you can guess that for me. This number of people? Uh-huh. Um, ages 7 through 12. What is age 7 through 12? Okay. So, so read the question. So in Mississippi, a new law requires that this number of people Buckle up in a car, truck, or SUV. This number. Um, so, so if you're in a vehicle with somebody, how many of those people have to be buckled up? All of them. What is all of them? There you go. What is everyone? Everyone. Because everyone is required uh, here in Mississippi. So, so that's fairly new legislation that came out. Uh, originally, it was just sort of the driver and a passenger uh, yeah. on the front seat. But now everybody in a vehicle, it should be, you know, they, should be, they should be buckled up. Even if you're in the back seat, they have to be buckled up. Mm -hmm. All right. Could give me one, one or two more. Um, occupant safety 400. Occupant safety 400. Okay. The first state to pass a law to require seatbelt use. Where, where is New York? Okay. What is New York? Okay. Yes. That is it. That's the first thing. You, you're doing pretty good there. All right. Give me one more. Um, speeding 400. Speeding 400. Okay. 
operating a vehicle in willful or wanton disregard for the safety of persons or property. What is reckless driving? What is speeding. reckless driving? For speeding. Now you, oh, oh, did I did I did I give you the answer? You, you uh, exited off road. I answered it out. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. That, that wasn't it. Hold on. Uh -uh. What was it? Four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. What is reckless driving? You did yeah. that right. I'm sorry. I, I did it stupid before I even revealed the answer. But what is reckless driving? All right. All right. What else you got for me? Um, occupant safety 500. Occupant safety 500. Okay. Operating a vehicle in willful disregard for the safety. I think that's the same question. But yeah. 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 Reckless driving. All right, one more, and then we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Okay. Um, speeding 500. Speeding 500. Okay. All right. Driving in an imprudent, ma imprudent manner without regard for the width of curves or traffic or the streets or the highways. What is, what is careless driving? What is careless driving? That is absolutely correct. And so you've done a real good job. So I definitely appreciate that. Look, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to be emailing you a link uh, to complete uh, basically this survey. Okay. For me. Uh -huh. A couple of questions. It's, got, it's a pre it's a pre and a post assessment. Basically, it's going to ask you questions, uh, you know, about what you know before this presentation. And mm -hmm. then I ask you on the next part, uh, you know, what did you know after this presentation? And so I'm going to send that to you as soon as we end this call for you. Uh, okay. And uh, if you could just go ahead and complete that as quickly as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'd be fresh on your mind and just be honest with your answers. Like I said, just honestly, uh, you know, did you know this stuff before we started talking? And then after the presentation, did you, you know, were you able to recall something? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send that to you in just a few minutes. Uh, okay. But thank you so much uh, for joining me today. So did you have any other questions or anything or any comments? No. All right. Well, thank you so much, man, for uh, participating in this. And I really do appreciate it. And we hope you learned something out of it. And I'll be forwarding you an email soon. And again, uh, my name is Keith Lamont McMillan. And we're with the... Uh, Interdisciplinary Alcohol Drug Study Center. We're yeah. working with the Mississippi Office of Highway Safety uh, to decrease the number of teen fatalities in the state of Mississippi to uh, driving, teen driving in the state of Mississippi. So that is exactly what we're doing. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Yep. You too. All right, thanks.